Hello dear students, welcome to the lecture 8 of Responsive Web Design with ASV.NET 5 and MVC Pattern and Bootstrap 5. Uh, so today we will continue from where we have left in the previous uh, lecture. Uh, in the lecture 7 we have seen uh, model binding uh, at the end. So let's start with uh, cloning our uh, latest project as usual. So that you can access each of them individually uh, from GitHub. You could also do that with uh, GitHub uh, versioning uh, branching, but it may be harder for who is not accustomed to uh, GitHub repository management. Therefore, I am cloning each time the project. Okay. So in the model binding, uh, we were able to bind uh, parameters to our model and at the code behind they were automatically uh, getting uh, bound uh, in a moment I, I will show that and we will remember it uh, so it was much easier to use than old school uh, HTML uh, form posting and such okay so let's rename uh, our lecture to 8 okay okay you see we have lecture 7 controller and here uh, we should have model bound version okay none of these are taking uh, a model we need action that takes model maybe it was inside Another thing, okay, binding controller, okay, here, you see, uh, this uh, action result is taking a model as an input, uh, this is how we bind uh, a form to a model, let's go to the view of this uh, controller, and we were using uh, entity framework to do our database operations so it will be inside binding folder okay okay so this is how we generate a model using um, a html form and this is how we bind parameters uh, so yeah this is it so let's continue to our uh, tutorial. Okay, so the next article is data and uh, annotations. Okay. In the previous article, we started digging into the very relevant subject of model binding. With model binding, we can create a stronger connection between the model and the view, and in return, we get a lot of help in the creation of markup and processing of requests. The view simply reads your model, class, and then uses the available information to help you, e.g. by creating a relevant text box control for a property in a form. Okay, so let's uh, run our application to remember. You see, uh, there is a label for, um, this is, uh, an IHTML helper method and there is text box for <coughs> uh, ASP.NET MVC engine is generating relevant HTML code uh, from the server side code and simply there is submit and there is the form okay so where does this form get the post address uh, I think it is simply posting to uh, whatever the page it is. So it is posting to by default since we didn't define anything. Index of binding controller. Yes. We also had uh, defined attribute routing and post. Um, let's say http post uh, filtering okay filtering is good so you see 
first name parameter, last name parameter. We can all of course customize this and we will see them. So let's continue. However, sometimes it can be relevant for your views to know more about a property on your model than just its name and type. For these situations, ASP.NET MVC comes with the concept of data annotations, sometimes referred to as model attributes, which basically allows you to add metadata to a property. The cool thing about data annotations is that they don't disturb the use of your models outside of the MVC framework. I think model attributes sounds better, more explanatory. Okay, so how to use data annotations? How to use data annotations? Allow me to give you a quick idea of how data annotations work. For instance, a very common scenario, which we actually saw in the previous article, is that we would like to have the framework generate a label and an input field for a property. When generating the label, the name of the property is used, but property names are generally not nice to look at for humans. As an example of that, we might want to change the display version of the first name property to first name. With data annotations, that's very easy. Okay, uh, so uh, let's uh, remember what was happening. Um, we were uh, setting same parameter name. So this parameter name, this uh, property comes from our model. I think I will uh, duplicate code so the lecture 7 will remain as well or just let's change this lecture 8 perhaps no let no, okay let's keep the lecture 7 so let's add lecture 8 it will be a controller okay add Okay, lecture eight. And this will use model of lecture seven. I'm going to duplicate that as well. Lecture seven. Okay. And let's copy and paste this into here let's copy and okay this doesn't have ending controller so i have to fix that okay yes all the references are getting renamed and let's copy and paste these methods actually we, we just need to get the binding controller methods not the lecture 8 here so I have to delete this because by the uh, they will they will get conflicting uh, if I keep it. Now the root will be lecture eight, and it will be using lecture eight. So it will let me suggestion as lecture six models namespace lecture six. Okay, it will use lecture eight model. We also need lecture eight weave. Okay, and let's add index HTML. We can also add le lecture eight weave as well. I think I will name it as lecture eight. Okay, so when I return weave. Uh, I have to return lecture 8 since it is not index and here also lecture 8 and let's copy and paste binding here okay and we also need to set lecture 8 model okay here Okay, so everything is ready. By default, we should see lecture 8. So let's type a message here. Lecture 8 index or let's say main page. Let's make this header. H1. And run the application to see.
Okay, it says that we are passing an incorrect item to maybe controllers. Okay, where do we have an error? it says that we have passed somewhere lecture 8 model but where lecture 8 controller lecture 8 okay update user so update user uh, expecting lecture 7 oh no it is not i think refresh model is the problem perhaps let's try yeah here here is the problem uh, because this is returning lecture 7 and uh, our view is expecting lecture 8 therefore uh, we need to have uh, additional refresh model okay how should we set it yeah i think we can make this perfectly dynamic with no it wouldn't be strong type of let's add a int ir lecture numbers and here Hmm. okay this is going to be a bit of problem yeah let's duplicate this code we could all reduce the duplicate code but i think it doesn't worth it okay so this is the refresh model but since they have the same signature it will get uh, conflicting so this will be version 6, 8 and here i will just call the version 8 okay now it should work you see when you encounter a problem should read the details because uh, usually details will tell you where is the problem then you can pinpoint the problem easily and solve it okay so the error messages you are getting when developing a software is really important okay so lecture 8 main page is open it but we are still seeing uh, parameter names so now we are going to use data annotations as known as also the model attributes where do we set this attribute we set this attribute uh, data annotation actually at the uh, model so let's open our model which is lecture 8 and i will set the first name as first name okay but you see it is uh, displaying an error because it you it requires using system component data annotations reference and after it is added now we can add so the last name will be as last name okay so let's format a bit and now when we restart the application we will see this display you see we also provide which item uh, of the annotation display takes uh, some parameters and we are providing name you see display attribute has probably multiple um, options okay first name and last name yes much better let's continue notice how the data annotation just sits on top of the property 
just like any other type of C-sharp custom attribute. Using the display data enunciation, we can alter the display version of the property name. With that in place, our property keeps its original name, but whenever it's presented to a user, an alternate version of first name is used. Types of data annotations. This was just an example of one of the many available data annotation attributes. There are many more, but a lot of them relates directly to validation, a subject which we'll be discussing in one of the next articles. But for a complete list of available annotation attributes, I suggest that you check out the documentation. Okay, let's take a look at the documentation. Okay, currently it is displaying .NET 5, so we are going to choose .NET Core. Actually, there is .NET Core 5, but maybe .NET Standard? No. Oh. Yeah, .NET 5 is the real new one. Okay, yes, true. So, what other annotations there are? So, okay, there are so many annotations. You see, display attribute, data type attribute, custom validation, credit card. Let's look at the display attribute and see what properties it has. It has description. Guess or sets a value that is used to display description in the UI. Group name, name. Orders, interesting. Prompt, resource type, short name, type ID. Uh, actually, I will. I want to check the description and see what kind of description attribute we can set. So, okay, you see, when I put a comma, it is displaying all possible uh, attributes that we can set. So I'm going to set description as well. We have set the name and there is also order prompt. Let's set the description equal to please enter your first name to the text box. Okay. And let's also set a prompt. I wonder what does that do? Okay, uh, so this is this is the prompt message. Okay, now when we restart the application, we can see what kind of HTML source code is generated. This is just for the display attribution attribute. There are also so many other attributes such as home page, credit card, custom validation, data type, display column. An editable attribute, email address, we will see many of them in the following uh, lectures, but you, we can use uh, all of them by just looking here. So I think I will uh, add this to the source code like this. And as well, um, Property attributes data annotations. Okay, so here our page open it. When I hover my mouse, I see nothing. Okay, let's check the source code. Okay, there is placeholder. This is the prompt message. However, placeholders uh, would be displayed in the text box. And value and yeah. So as we see, uh, the description is nowhere to be found. And the placeholder, this is the prompt message. So I think we can set uh, prompt message for the text box maybe here but i'm not sure how we can do it hmm. yeah. okay if you ever need that let's look um,
okay there is model email new title oh so you can display it like this anyway let's continue with our uh, tutorial summary data annotations allow you to enrich your models with metadata which can be used for a wide range of purposes by the mvc framework We'll talk about one of the most important use cases for data annotations in the next article, model validation. Okay, let's continue. But before doing that, I would like to change this text box with attribute. Okay, there is team model HTML attributes, not team, but team model perhaps okay there is expression string format t model mm. that's no mm. oh html attributes And we see text box prompt attribute. Let's see. Oh, there is placeholder email. Mm. No, Nive. Okay, so this is a way, but I would like to use prompt attributes that is description. Hmm. So this is the way we set. So here I am setting it equal to uh, last name, whatever name. But I think I can also set it to uh, prompt attribute. Perhaps how can I do that? Okay, no attributes like that. Mm, text area for input fields. Text area for oh, this is text box for. Okay. Mm. So probably we need to set. Okay. And uh, HTML attributes. How can we set that? We need to set it as new. T model no mm. Nive and there is class okay we don't need the class is placeholder and for this placeholder i want to use the model okay mm, no not available so i have to set custom attribute here enter your name and let's rerun we could also set other attributes of text box uh, in here, but I'm just setting the placeholder. Okay. I see. Okay, anyway, and let's move to the next. Okay. 
and update it v4 db v4 okay it didn't work why why the placeholder didn't work okay placeholder here but since it has a value i think that is overriding yes when we delete the value the placeholder works i see you see the placeholder box when we delete the value all right so we will continue with model validation okay so model validation model validation in the previous article we talked about data annotations and how they can enrich your models to work even tighter together with your views However, a lot of the available data annotations are actually directly related to the validation mechanisms found in the ASP.NET MVC framework. They will allow you to enforce various kinds of rules for your properties, which will be used in your views and in your controllers, where you will be able to check whether a certain model is valid in its current state or not, e.g. after a form submission. So since uh, this will also validate model at the server side, it provides 100% security. Even if the uh, malicious user modifies your HTML code and sends unexpected values back to your server, with model validation uh, techniques of ASP.NET framework, you will be secured. Okay. Adding basic validation. Just like we saw in the previous article, validation rules can be applied to properties through the use of data annotations. There are several types available, but for now, we'll add just a couple of them to the web user class previously introduced. Okay, so let's apply some of them to our uh, method model actually. So we have display name. We also add required. Required means that this date specifies a date uh, that a data field required and it will be uh, maximum by default we can also set i think min and max and how do we do that maximum length okay minimum length like this okay minimum length equal to let's say three characters and maximum length will be 25 so this will be applied to name method before even we can do postback let's try and if we don't enter anything uh, it won't postback to the server of course the source code modification can uh, cause a postback but um, when we do the model validation, it won't work. Currently, we are not uh, doing any model validation. So I will just show you example. Okay, when I type something like this and click submit. Okay, it says that. Oh, multiple actions mesh it. Binding controller index and lecture controller index. So... In the binding controller, yeah, I have to remove these as well. That is why. Okay, let's let's start. It was related to uh, routing that we have set in the previous lecture. I am not sure if this will ensure that I think it won't show error message here. When I like do like this, let's just type something, submit. And yeah, it is not an, uh, enforcing any validation at the moment. So it is just working right now. So this is not, uh, we are not uh, enforcing any validation let's also add a mail address as well to our model here okay string is our email 
and this email will be also required an email address validation and I also will generate a field for email let's also set display name for email I think I will also set a prompt no this is the bottomark this is not related this is description UI do we have placeholders no let's try description okay email and let's continue notice how the three properties have all been decorated with data annotations giving the framework useful information for validating the data first of all all properties have been marked with the required attribute meaning that a value is required it can't be null we have also used the mm -hmm. string length attribute to make requirements about the maximum and in one case minimum length of the strings these are of course particularly relevant if your model corresponds to a database table where strings are often defined with a maximum length for the last property we have used the email address attribute to ensure that the value provided looks like an email address to test this example let's create a simple form for it we'll use model binding as described in a previous article to generate the fields for the properties okay we have already done that now now we just need a controller to serve the view as well as handle the post request when the form is submitted okay so there is uh, the issue uh, you see we have model state is valid we have to apply that and we are going to apply that rule into our action page where we get the model so model state is valid since we are getting a model if it is invalid uh, we are going to return a message like this and we will just return so if it is invalid let's okay take it like this and we will say that so can we see it in which uh, value is error nose yeah, we will go get to that the values you have entered are invalid therefore please fix the errors and try again so let's try what we were enforcing we were enforcing a valid email address uh, a name a first name with minimum letter 3 and maximum 25 okay so since we have done update at the database it's coming as d and when i submit okay it says the values you have entered are invalid therefore fi fixed error when, for example i submit da and it won't update the database yes however if i make it like this and enter a valid email it should submit okay now updated However, we don't have email as our database, so it is not getting updated. Let's open our SQL Server Profiler. I will add email option and it will be nullable column. Therefore, when I do update, uh, it should work. Oh, I also need to update my, uh, of course, context. I will do that as well. So it will be also 
uh, useful for you to remember how it was done so it was no not this one okay mvc yeah it was our mvc here okay let's design and add email i will make it and more character okay 200 and it will be allowing nulls okay therefore the existing users will get null value in their email address like this okay and then we need to update our model with ep power tools reverse engineer and i okay mvc is selected now currently loading database objects okay i will pick everything yes i will include connection string okay okay it has generated email as well has max length and it should allow also nullable let's make it a comment like this and then uh, in my controller i need to set email equal to my model dot sr email okay now email will be also set we are currently only updating user id one so if i want to update other users i need to also add user id let's add that as well okay let's generate user id to be able to generate user id i need to modify my model as user id actually this will be an integer therefore i will set it as integer ir user id it will be required and let's set it as user id and uh, uh, valid user id okay we can also set uh, a requirement as integer perhaps let's see if there is something like that number no hmm. min length what other there is and int no you see there is phone attribute requires regular expression range attribute and set range yes it is double though it is not integer so range wouldn't work what else there is validation url type and string Target range on obsolete. I think there can be min max, but I'm not sure. There's custom validation as well. Hmm. No. Probably we need to set a uh, range. It is for double though. I think we can set some values as, let's see. There is minimum, maximum. Let's set the minimum as one, maximum as in 32 max. Okay. And let's set them here user id text box for user id i will remove this and at the code behind uh, we need to update by getting user id yeah 
so update user needs to be updated um, okay because it wouldn't work with lecture 7 anyway let's just update it so we have my user incoming it will use my user user id okay and user dot email will be equal to my user dot email okay so did we make the user id uh, primary key identity let's check it out if it is identity uh, then we won't yo no it is not identity therefore we can we should we need to also provide user id as well okay everything is set here and okay what we need to do is change refresh model so where do we call this we call it by the way we also need to set email here as well here so here we are providing one but we will change this uh, actually here uh, this is the get method get method can remain like this but for post we need to provide user id uh, from here my model dot user id also uh, for get method I am going to get an integer like this equal one and here so for this to be able to work we need to add optional parameters perhaps like this I'm not sure how can we add optional parameter Yeah, we need to provide full path or okay let me see about good optional parameters in the root this is full path okay no yeah it should work like this so let's try i think we should delete this and let's restart to see what happens and let's try to update different users I think I will list users as table uh, uh, at the bottom. Okay, it is working. So let's try user two. Yes, it is working. However, we are not setting user ID. Therefore, uh, we need to set that. And how are we gonna set it from refresh model, perhaps? Yeah, we need to set user ID here equal to user id yes and we need to set uh, email as well i think oh no no I need to set email and actually let's just don't set these two okay now it should work Okay, user id 1 let's get user id 2 user id 2 and let's get user id 3 user id 3 let's update an email for user id 3 
Okay, when I refresh database, there is nothing. I actually email is null and submit. Okay, so it says there is a page. Okay, since we have changed our URL, now we have to define the post as well. So in the HTML begin form, we need to set a post action. And how we were setting it. Okay, let's see. No. Maybe here. Okay, there is action context. Mm, URL perhaps. No. Action name. Yeah, okay, there is action name and it will be okay. So we need to encapsulate okay, action name. I think we can just set it like this. So let's provide full URL. So the full URL will be lecture eight, and um, where is our post? So it will be index yes. Lecture eight index action. Let's try. You see, when you change the URL that doesn't match to default, you have to specify which form it will be post. Okay, well, let's check the submit uh, source code. Okay, so it is going to post length 15. Okay, it looks like incorrect. Yeah, this action name is incorrect. Let's try like this. Yeah. I'm not sure. Let's try. So let's try four. Okay, they are not getting loaded. Interesting. Why? In our refresh model. Let's put a breakpoint here and get the page. Okay. Okay, we are users. Oh, it didn't find we are user because the user ID is okay, it is four. Why? Oh, we don't have such user. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, let's continue. So we have user six. Let's try that. Okay, it is here. Let's try to update user six submit. Okay, so this is not the correct way. Let's just fix it. So this is the way new action begin form new action and it will be of course not this one it will be like this new action okay and let's see new add action yeah new action Like this, perhaps. Let's see if this will work.
Oh, we need to remove those. Uh, okay. Okay, so it didn't work this way. So why is this not working? Okay, none of the answers are looking good. Oh, we can also set action name. So the first one is being the action name, yeah. I think this is nice, nice. So here on our, I think this is the nicest solution. Uh, road, I'm going to set action name as update model. Or let's say update lecture eight model whatever i can well whatever i want and in the action here i will just provide a name it will be the action name simply like this i think uh, rest will be handled by the uh, asp.net engine we can also set form post method and such, but it will be by default. Let's see. Okay, length 16. Let's try something like this. Okay, it doesn't look correct to me. Why? This was looking good, but it didn't work. Okay, one moment. Okay, there are other parameters as well. Login and account. Home controller index action. HTML begin form. Yeah. Why is our thing is not working? Lecture eight. 
So the first one is action name and the second one is okay. So now we are seeing uh, form method. Let's see controller name action name. Okay. Now it should work and our action name will be this one. Yeah, yeah, now makes sense. Now it will look for lecture 8 controller with the action name update lecture 8 model. Let's retry. So this is the way we should have done that. Okay, let's check the action. Okay, now looks correct to me. Let's retry like this. Yes. So now we can update. Let's update user. Oh, by the way, since there is no user ID for, I think you should insert it. okay now it is working let's check the database there were no user 4 and now it is here let's update user 6 you see the url has returned back the root because that is what we have done and user 6 at gmail.com okay it is also working let's enter a non-valid email and see what happens Okay, the values you have entered are invalid, therefore please fix the errors and try again. And it didn't get updated. Okay, everything is working. Now we can continue to our uh, tutorial. Okay, so let's continue to tutorial. The interesting part here is of course the post action, where we check the is valid property of the model state object. Depending on the data you submitted in the form, it will be either true or false, based on the validation rules we defined for the model web user. With this in place, you can now prevent a model from being saved, e.g. to a database, unless it's completely valid. Displaying validation errors. Okay, this is what we need. Currently, we are not displaying any error to the user, therefore they cannot know what is wrong. And this is something that I personally hate from the applications when they don't show exactly what is wrong. So you should always display what is wrong to the user. Let's continue. How can we do it easily? In the above example, we can now see whether a model is valid or not, thanks to the validation rules we have added to the model. But it would obviously be way more useful if we could show these problems to the end user so that they could be fixed. Fortunately for us, that's really easy. First of all, we need to extend our form so that it can display error messages to the user. We can use another helper method found on the HTML object, the validation message for method. It will simply output the error message related to the field. If there is one otherwise, nothing will be outputted. Here's the extended version of our form. Okay, so simply we are adding HTML validation message for to our form for each uh, attribute that we have and this will generate a necessary html code automatically for our application which is extremely convenient to use okay let's restart the application Okay, now when we check the source code, we will see what additional code added. Okay, so you see there is request verification token. 
And let's check the each div. Okay, there is email. You see data wall email. The email field is not valid email address. So this is the message that it has automatically added. Also, there is another message. So these are probably related to browsers. And yeah. So it is also using spawn class field validation and input. Yeah, I think it is using the browser features itself. So when I submit like this, okay, it says that the email field is not valid email address. You see, we are seeing the error here. And when we check other ones, okay, so there is also field validation valid class and actually there is no validation for our this one let's check this one and uh, since there weren't any validation it didn't generate anything it is just like this and when we check this one okay so it has added input data wall data wall length okay data wall length max data wall length mean i think it is simply using uh, browser features uh, whatever the browser you are using why i can see the page source let's try like this okay yes i don't see any script so simply it is depending on the browser that you are using if your browser is not supporting these features it wouldn't work obviously for example, let's try submit. Yes, it says the email field. So, so the message is also different. So this is saying the email field is required. The email field is not valid. The field first name must be a string with minimum length three and maximum length of 25. Let's see if it's same here. Yeah, same. Let me try Explorer, older one, Internet Explorer which is not commonly used anymore let's try let's see if it is working or not okay let's try like this oh it is still working so this one is also but this is not the oldest yeah this is not the oldest internet explorer this is the one that was still decent you see also there is data value d which is what we have set when I set like this okay it says that the field user ID must be between one and the integer max okay everything is working now we are also seeing error messages just next to the uh, element with spawn as you can see and it is extremely useful extremely uh, easy to implement let's continue we also need to make sure that once the form is submitted, and if there are validation errors, we return the form to the user, so that they can see and fix these errors. We do that in our controller, simply by returning the view and the current model state, if there are any validation errors. By the way, it is important that uh, you have to always check this at the server side. Because uh, without server side validation, your application will be vulnerable to every kind of attack. With that in place, try submitting the form with empty fields. You should be immediately returned to the form, but with validation messages next to each of the fields, thanks to the required attribute. Okay, let's test something okay the form submission is still happening we are not still preventing form submission but we are checking uh, and displaying the error messages if you try submitting the form with a value that doesn't meet the string length requirements you will notice that there are even automatically generated error messages for these as well for instance if you submit the form with a last name that's either too long or too short you will get this message. The field last name must be a string with a minimum length of 3 and a maximum length of 50. But what if you want more control of these messages? No problem, they can be overridden directly in the data annotations of the model. 
Here's a version of our model where we have applied custom error messages. Okay, you you would like to generate uh, custom messages because in your language, for example, for example, if you want to make this in Turkish, we need to change uh, messages as well. So, okay, so we set required and now we can set error message of required, something like this. Let's try. So I will say that um, I will change it to anything I want. You have to enter valid email uh, email can't be left empty okay or for example let's add a message for range how can we set it i think from here concurrent pool okay there's error message like this equal to uh, the answer it value was not a valid integer for example okay now let's retry by the way i think this is also this will also accept double values therefore we have to enter something that is not valid as an integer assume that you are displaying messages according to uh, your visitor language then uh, the, it can be also extremely easily done uh, based on some parameters you can feed custom message here okay you have and you have to enter a valid email okay so this is the message we have entered let's try something bigger than maximum integers okay the value is not valid for user id okay so this is not the message we wanted let's try something like this Okay, this is correct, but this one is not. Hmm. Okay, so there are two different messages. Interesting. It display different message based on the different input. Anyway, uh, still we are seeing the error, and we are able to set custom messages. So you see, for require requirement, you can set this. For email address, you can set this. You can set as you want. So as you can see, it's really easy to customize the error messages. Displaying a validation summary. An individual error message for each input field can be really useful, especially if you have a large form. However, for smaller forms, like the one in our example, it might be more useful to simply display a summary of the validation errors, either above or below all the fields. That's easily accomplished, thanks to the validation summary method found on the HTML helper object. Okay, let's also print the uh, summary and see what kind of output it generates. I am going to put it uh, under the input, like this, and see what kind of validation summary output we will get. We will still get the individual messages since we didn't remove them. And we will get a summary as well. However, uh, displaying both might be more useful because with individual messages, they will, they will be sure that what is wrong for which field. Uh, with summary it will display everything at the bottom okay so this is our summary 
you have to enter a valid email that can email can't be left empty it is the same as here okay so it is now and let's enter zero okay it is added let's enter like this okay so this is the summary and these are the individual error messages it is working great okay okay so let's continue summary adding basic model validation is very easy and will help ensure that user provided information matches the requirements you may have for the data as mentioned these are just some of the validation options available in the asp.net mvc framework in the next article we'll look into the rest of them okay let's move to the next article Okay, types of model validation data and annotations. Types of model validation data annotations. In the last article, we introduced model validation and showed you how easy it is to get started with. We used a couple of the validation related data annotations like required and string length, but as mentioned, there are several other types. In this article, I will run through all of them to give you a better idea of all the possibilities. Required Specifies that a value needs to be provided for this property. You should be aware that non-nullable value types, e.g. integers and date times, are always required and therefore you don't need to add the required attribute for them. For strings you should have in mind that an empty value will be treated like a null value and therefore result in a validation error. This behavior can be changed by using the allow empty strings property though. Okay, let's try with allow empty strings property. And in our model here, I will set uh, the last name as required. However, I will allow, you see it is also displaying that feature. I love how to string it's a bool validation equal to true now it will be required but it will allow empty strings empty string is simply space character okay let's retry okay we have seen the string length string length allows you to specify at least a maximum amount of characters the first non-optional parameter for a string with the added possibility of specifying a minimum amount as well here's an example string length 50 minimum length equals 3 in this case, the value can't be validated if it's less than three characters or more than 50 characters long. Okay, so first let's try our last name. I will delete it. Submit. Okay, it says the last name field is required. Now I will test with a space character like this. Submit. Oh, we are still getting, getting an error. Okay, let's see. We have put it to last name, yeah, and we have allowed empty strings let's try again interesting let's try something like this okay Ooh. it's it is supposed to allow empty characters but Yeah, it is not working. It's still not allowing no. Mm. Let's see if Amara also ask it.
Oh, I see. Hmm. We also need to set this as well. Anyway, it is not very important. Let's continue. Okay, there is range. Range. With the range attribute, you can specify a minimum and a maximum value for a numeric property, int, float, double, etc. Both a minimum and a maximum is required when you use this attribute like this. Range 1, 100. Now your numeric value must be between 1 and 100. Compare. The compare attribute allows you to set up a comparison between the property in question and another property, requiring them to match. A common use case for this could be to ensure that the user enters the same values in both the email and the email repeated fields. Compare mail address repeated public string mail address get set public string mail address repeated get set okay so for this to work we need to add additional uh, parameters to our model but it won't be used when saving or updating database uh, simply it will be like email repeated like this and then uh, we are going to generate uh, additional email parameter as email repeated like this and additionally here we are going to add a compare with compare and it will take other property the other property will be email repeated but it is expecting a string yes yeah let's try if it will work or not Okay, we have email repeated in the same div. So I it's like this. Okay, email and SR repeated, repeated do, do not match. Yes, now we are getting the error message. It is displayed here. We can set wherever we want the message to be displayed. For example, uh, I can set the validation message uh inside same div but but with uh a br i mean the new line like this and why it is not working like this and now the new message will be here i can also uh change how it looks for example let's do that as well Okay, let's remove and spawn like this and let's get some styling style okay here let's set font colors or let's say just the background color for example background okay colors as whatever the color we want for example blue violet okay and now the message of error message of email will be displayed under the uh, text boxes with a background of a background color of blue violet
Okay, and there are also specific types. I will also test them. Okay, let's try it like this. Okay, the email field is not a valid email address, so I have to add a valid email first. Then, okay, email and SR email repeated do not match. Okay, and let's continue. So there is also specific types. Specific types. If your string falls into a specific category, e.g. a phone number, the ASP.NET MVC can supply you with basic validation out of the box. Here's a list of the types you can specify. Credit card validates that the property has a credit card format. Okay, so for example, credit card. How can we do it? Let's generate another div. And let's look for HTML. If there is any credit card, checkbox. Okay, and okay, metadata provider, temp data, URL encoder. Editor, format, ID, label, list box, password, radio button, text area, text box. I think it was done with a special format. So let me find it. Okay, and it will be MVC. Okay, text box for credit card. Okay, and Model student name, model age. Okay, there is editor for, and maybe we need to use editor for, I'm not sure, for credit card. Let's see if there is such format. Okay, so um, no, I am looking for something automatic. Yeah, so that that MVC automatic credit card input. Okay, so data type. Okay, there is data type and The label for text box for hmm. HTML text box for credit card. Maybe there is some solution. Uh, 
Okay, so probably there are helpers. Let's get text box. Okay, so type pattern. Hmm. So probably with pattern we can uh, achieve that. Okay, like this. Text box for, and then there is string format. Okay, um, Yeah, I couldn't find it right now. If I search, probably I can. But I will just pass it. So you can validate property, email address, yes. Common for all of these is that they only provide a very basic validation. So for instance, the email validation will only ensure that the entered value will contain some of the characteristics of an email address, like containing an it character and so on, but it will still be possible to enter something that is not actually an email address. For more accuracy and or flexibility, use the regular expression, attribute, or implement your own custom logic, as described in one of the next articles. Regular expression. When none of the other types of validation are flexible enough, the last resort might very well be the regular expression attribute. It allows you to specify a regular expression which the value of your property will be validated against, and it will only be valid if there's a match. Regular expressions are way too big a subject to handle in this article, but allow me to demonstrate just how powerful they are anyway. Imagine that your web user class has a member ID which has to be in this specific format. 20-0000-0000. Or in other words, two letters, a dash and then two groups of four numbers with a dash between, like ZX1234-5678. We can make a regular expression for just that and put it inside our regular expression attribute. Regular expression AZ2. Okay, so regular expressions are, of course, another topic, but you can use regular expressions as well for validation. This can be done for credit card or any other thing. The, re the possibilities with regular expressions are, of course, endless. The possibilities with regular expressions are almost endless, and they can be used in many other situations than just validation, so learning how to use them can be a good investment. Definitely very good investment. You should learn them if you can. They are hard, but extremely useful in many cases. Investment. Here's a couple of links if you want to get started learning regular expressions. Regex tutorial and cheat sheet slash regex interactive tutorial. So when we open these pages, I think we will see them. Okay, there is a tutorial here and there is another one you can type your pattern 
for example let's type our pattern okay and oh here we have to type pattern that will match this so maybe like this yeah it is matching all okay Okay, usually it's matching all three characters and when we wait for the zone fails. Like this you can do it. I am not I also don't I am not also very good with regular expressions. Um therefore I can't show you I can't show you a lot of uh, example but there are also some less notes here, so I think this would be three and six or seven yes minimum three maximum six we could also set uh, characters such as like this yes still matching but like this it was fail. yeah very good very good website actually to learn regular expressions okay so let's move to the next custom model validation custom model validation if you ever feel that the built-in validation methods as discussed in the previous articles are not enough asp.net mvc offers you the possibility of implementing your own validation logic there may be many occasions where this is a good idea, but you should of course first make sure that there isn't already an easier, built-in alternative, like the, regular expression, option, which offers great flexibility. With that said, it's really not that difficult to implement your own validation logic. There are a couple of ways to do it, so let's examine both. We'll expand on our previous examples in the last couple of articles, where we introduced the web user class. We'll add a birthday property to it, and then do some custom validation of it. Custom validation with validation attribute. If you want validation similar to the built-in kind, where you can add data annotations to your properties, e.g., required, or email address, you can simply create a class and let it inherit from the validation attribute. After that, simply override the isValid method and write your own logic. For our example, I have added some pretty basic, and perhaps slightly silly, validation to the isValid method, just to show you the possibilities. Some of it could have been handled with range validation, but not all of it, and that's the beauty of custom validation you can add as much logic as you need to. Also, you can return individual error messages for each of your checks, like I do in my example. Okay, so uh, this is a great example of doing uh, custom validation assume that we also have birthday uh, parameter as well so let's add birthday to our uh, database and it will be date time we will allow nulls and then just re up, uh, update our uh, model okay so the birthday will come let's see the birthday where it is email birthday here has column type date time and then in our uh, model here i'm going to add prop date time okay dt birthday okay i could use uh, validation for birthday something like this date time of course not uh, birthday okay where is the date time validation or date data type dot of yeah why i don't see the options data type hmm. Okay, pass. 
there was a list of all validations let's check them it was in the previous one i think or let's check from our source code here let's open it what kind of data annotations we have and here we have credit card attribute for example and i think i will check the data type okay there is data type and from data type we have credit card currency custom date date time yes so this is the one that we need and there is an example also or here here how we apply it so i could just apply um, data type requirement and data type email other um, date date time actually so this would ensure that the entered uh, address i uh, entered value is date time however i want to extend this for example i don't want to allow um, uh, dates uh, previous or after than certain date therefore i will write an extended validation class something like this public class or method let's see here class uh, my custom the uh, birth day validation and it will extend uh, data validation i think it is validation attribute yeah so this is a class extension uh, class inheritance actually not extension so this is this class will inherit everything that validation attribute class have you see it is coming from here then i am going to have pro protected override so this is going to overwrite validation result is valid method is valid method is called when it is called when we check in our controller model state is valid and here uh, we will check whether it is valid birthday or not first we should check actually the, whether entered value is daytime so first we need to add daytime like this and then uh, we will be sure that it is date time and we will check uh, the entered dates something like that okay and there are some validation results we can and we are going to add our custom uh, validation to here simply simply like this okay then uh, we are going to have another um division to here it will be let's copy paste this okay okay label for tt birthday and i think there is a way to date picker or something but i don't remember how was it Maybe it is shown here. Okay, it is still text box for. I think it was in the next articles. Maybe here, talk helpers. text area input so this is the topic of next uh, lecture but data value input Hmm. Yeah. Okay, so text box for okay, someone has already asked it. 
Okay, there is model and new type date. Yeah, this is the what we need. And here we will define the type as date. And validation message will be for DT birthday. We won't be saving them in the, uh, in the database yet because we didn't update our uh, functions. But we should be able to see custom validation already. I think we can even do a debug uh, at here. Okay, where did we code it? We have coded it in our uh, model. I think we can even test it here. Okay, first I will enter an invalid date. Okay, you see it's date format. This format is coming from browser, so it will look different on uh, each browser. Let's see. Okay, you see there is the icon is different. Not much, but different. So it should allow us to pick some date. Let me enter an invalid. Oh, it doesn't allow me to change i will make it invalid from here something like this oh it is not working okay i have changed the date value yeah let's try submit and see what happens okay it has come to here's the value oh it didn't send the value that we are modified interesting why i want to change the value here and send oh now the value is invalid okay so you see it is verifying uh, the value therefore we didn't get into this why because we are verifying the value is daytime or not in here uh, however, if I remove this, when I enter invalid value, I should get into my uh, method. Uh, let's see. So it provides an extra layer of security. First, we check that whether it is a valid date time, a value input. Then we check whether it satisfies our custom rules or not. Let's see. Okay, now I will change value to something invalid. So it has the default value as first year. And when I submit, oh, it still didn't work. The value is invalid. How it is able to check that? Input validation error. So it is not getting into here. Interesting. Invalid operation exception, not implemented exception. Maybe it is checking that it is whether uh, daytime or not, since this is daytime type. I'm not sure. Let me submit like, okay, we have to provide something. Okay. Now it is working. Yeah. Okay, so it says you are too young. Why? Because we are checking that if the birthday year is above 2000, uh, they are just too young. Let's also update our model so they will be saved in uh, database. DT birthday equals we are user date birthday. And then oh, 
You ca cannot implicitly convert system data. Okay, it is not able to convert because we allow null values. Therefore, um, we have to check whether if it is not null, if null, uh, we have to explicitly convert it. this okay and actual database null okay let's set it like this and here we need to set the email as well i mean the birthday Okay, so this is update users. Okay, let's try and let's see the users. Okay, birthday values are null. Actually, this is database null, so I'm not sure if it will work or not as a null check because normally daytime cannot be null because it's a struct type. So to be sure, uh, we just need to set a breakpoint here. When we refresh model, we will see. So let's refresh. So the birthday, okay, it is null, therefore it should work. We are working. And let's update this user birthday something valid as, okay, mm, 2005. February 15th, I think it is, okay, not, not satisfying, so we need to change it to something like, like this, okay, now it should work, let's enter a valid email too. Okay, so it says it is updated and when we refresh, it is not getting it read. Okay, okay, it, is, it didn't work. Why? We have an error somewhere. Oh, I know the reason because we didn't set it here. We also have to set it here as equal to my model dot bt birthday and now it should work okay and you see email was updated therefore i can see it let's update birthday as well okay now updated and let's refresh okay it is not read but it is updated okay so the birthday is updated but it is not displayed here uh, i wonder if we can display the data but probably we can't load it yeah it, it is it is probably coming from database but not getting loaded into here okay actually the value is set but it is not displayed what kind of value would we get displayed maybe let's pick something Okay, why I don't see the value? Eh? 
changing, interesting. Okay, it is setting sum and a value, but I don't see it in the source code. So this value is kept somewhere else. What where? Okay, it shows there is flex. What is this? Okay, let's see. Okay, so hmm, type date. Okay, it is working here. So it is expecting a date something like this. We need to change the value of date actually. Hmm. I see. So I simply need to format the value like this year, month, date. So I will fix it in a moment in my controller refresh. So where is the refresh? Okay, so refresh is here. Let's go there. And when we read email, we are going to format it specifically to something. Okay, mm, try format or to string or um, yeah here and C sharp date time format to string. Let's see how can we do it. Okay, simply like this. Okay, what we need is year month and date let's open it i think it will be something like this year so no don't have this month date day and uh, oh i can't set it like that so i have to set uh, a string to its value so for to be able to set its value i think there is also something value or something Okay, there is near value so we need to set value equal to yeah and it will be to string oh it is not available here so how can we set a dynamic value model age okay so now this makes sense it will be model yeah and dt birthday to string yes simply like this so years okay it shows year four digits oh nice then month two digits nice and day day of the month two digits okay awesome I didn't know this was available. So you see how IntelliSense is 
advanced recently uh, it will be simply like this now it should work let's test it Okay, and oh, it is still not loaded by. Okay, so the value is not set. I think maybe this requires a bigger string like this. I'm not sure, or maybe at one moment. Let me see. Yeah, it is expecting something like this. Yeah, that is our mistake. Let's restart. It may be also case sensitive, but I am not sure about that. Oh, still not set by. Maybe it requires lower case. Let's try that way. Oh, HTML attributes. Okay, new mean max type name value. Hmm. Okay, so still not working. So it is expecting like this. Okay. So it is case sensitive uh, according to this answer. We can set type, ID, name, whatever we want and the value itself. Let's see will it work or not. Okay, still not working, why? We are setting value differently, but it is not working. Um, okay, let's try. Okay, according to the answer here, we need to set add character as well, and it is also case sensitive. So let's retry. It's still not working. This is so annoying. 
because whatever we do we are not able to set value of this nothing works Everywhere it is different, really, seriously, everywhere it is different. It says like this in here. Okay, let's, let's remove the type and try like this. Let's see what it put out for. If this works, then we can move from on here. Maybe it is because the browser is not able to handle, but in the source we can't also see. Yeah, value is not getting here. No matter what we do. It is interesting. New value not working. Let's try like this. Okay, this didn't work either. So, try this. Okay, not working either. Nothing works. Seriously, no value we set is not working. And it is extremely annoying. 
I don't know why. Okay, so it's saying that oh, this and this is being different, but these two are same. So this is same with this, mm. but none of them works. Why? 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 Both method is not working. A value anonymous type. Okay, so there is also editor for hmm. if the property your binding has a value. Oh, I see. So there is no way of changing this. I see. So when we bind, we are not able to change its value. Okay. Mm. Okay, someone has also asked this. Mm. They have fixed it with jQuery. Oh, there is display format. Maybe this can work for us. Yeah. Yeah, maybe this would work. I think this can be even better. But we also need to set type as date. Or something like this yeah type date and in our model here I am going to change the display format as Daytime. No. Mm. This is not working. Mm.
interesting put this work no this is not working we have tested this Okay, so yes, well, we can set format as well. Let's try horizontal first and No, still not working. Anyway, I will pause and find a solution. Okay, I have uh, noticed it that we have a very small uh, error. That is why it didn't work last time. You see, it is expecting uh, this type of uh, input. Uh, because according to I say all uh, 8601 uh, this is the format therefore after I have changed it, uh, the format like this now it is working let me show okay we have we did refresh and see the date is here so let's also set it another date like this and submit okay it doesn't accept <laughs> december according to our custom uh, verification okay now updated when i refresh you will see date is also being displayed okay everything is working totally as expected and let's open our tutorial okay verification is success Okay, here we are returning validation success. Okay, and okay, I think I will end the lecture here so we can continue from custom validation object. It will be also good for us that because we will uh, remember what we were doing the previous week. So let's take the lecture notes. Okay, we are left with here. Okay, let's read this part as well 
Congratulations, you have now implemented custom validation logic for one of your properties. One of the really cool benefits of this approach is that your validation logic isn't necessarily tied to a specific model instead of calling your class web user birthday validation attribute, you could have just called it birthday validation attribute and reused it across all types of birthday related properties in your project. On the other hand, you will run into situations where it makes perfect sense to tie your validation logic to your model. We'll see how that works in the next section of this article. Okay. So we are simply uh, validating as we want it. Okay. So let's take the notes of lecture eight. In the lecture eight, uh, what we did was we have defined a custom action name all to define custom path and action name for server post x with HTML begin form okay and what else we did okay how to set validation validation and validation okay how to set requirements model uh, properties messages to properties okay how to display validation or requirements results at the user screen at the client side okay uh, how to display validation summary okay Okay, what else? Mm. How to write more complex attribute routing? For example, this is rather a bit more complex here attribute routing. And this is the, our model. How to generate custom validation, inheriting validation attribute. Okay. How to generate a custom validation for model at, uh, model properties with using validation attribute with inheriting inheriting. Okay, and what else? How to overwrite validation result? We don't need to probably. And different types of um, requirements. Properties. Okay, I think uh, um, also we need, we should also um, write this, note this. 
how to um, modify displayment also format uh, display or folder this is at the client side how to set different input types at the client side with using type property of text box for HTML text box for okay so let me upload the source code uh, I think you should start your final project and start developing it and if you of course encounter any problems any questions ask them to me or your friends from our discord channel as usual I will also update database uh, so you can use that as well I mean update database backup file so let's add it to dbs pms okay there is pms bug I mean backup so I will just delete it here okay and yes and let's copy and paste it into our lecture 8 here okay so now time to update the github repository okay hopefully see you next week uh, try to be safe from coronavirus i hope you be well all right end of lecture eight